Alright, welcome to the stream. Um, one second. <clears throat> we are, uh, going to be painting some miniatures today. Miniatures like this little bookshelf, and yeah. I'm gonna be working on a horse today. Um, most of these are printed here. Um, some are purchased, but the vast majority are printed here on, uh, in our workshop on those printers behind us, um, like this bookshelf and that bed. And um, they, if you're interested in the uh, creators of these, the designers, I should say, um, go to our website, DysonDungeons.com, and you can find them there. Um, yeah, otherwise we're just gonna be- uh, Yeah, I'm gonna keep working on the painting the spirals on this bed stand the four poster which are a real pain and will require many iterations back and forth um, and i'm gonna i think i'm gonna work on this armored horse that we have which is very complicated So the other thing we were trying to do was test to see what happens with realistic water. Um, actually, after waiting for four days, at least. Touch it. Huh. Yeah. I mean, it leaked some more. Clearly. But it's not bad. No, it's not too bad. I think we should uh, keep using it. We just need to make sure that we seal no also we should use less of it yeah less of it so it's basically just kind of on the surface like a this. gloss sort of cover yeah, it, it looks yeah, it looks good is the bottom in any state of clean yeah not too bad it, that could it be leaked a little out. around the edges <clears throat> maybe i'll take the tape off hi char hi i hope char is fine and i it's easier for me to say uh, hmm. I need to cut that. All right. So I need to decide what color this horsey is going to be. Because I need to start putting in base coats first. And I think... I'm thinking like a light, light brown like this buff. All right. Just wanted to make sure. So, to get started, this is a pretty complicated model. Um, here's a good lesson. What happens when you are... <laughs> exactly. When you're tired at the end of the last stream and forget to clean off your brush. And now it has dry paint on it, right? Is you asked your painting partner to grab to give some sort of solvent for you? Yeah. Would you mind grabbing me a solvent? Yeah, I know. Maybe. Let, me, let me finish just cutting this bit off. Are you thinking isopropyl alcohol or? No, yeah, I'm thinking lacquer thinner. Lacquer thinner. Okay. Yeah, lacquer thinner would work better. <laughs> Alcohol will but, work, but the lacquer thinner um, is more effective. I uh, forgot to clean that out. So it's a mess. Um, that's cool. That's always fun. Trying new makeup. And I'm probably not going to use this brush today while it clears, cleans. Uh, oh. Is one of my fancy new brushes. So, question is, which of these cups will not dissolve? Oh, this one's newer and thicker. Yeah. <coughs> so using lacquer thinner, sometimes um, it'll melt the cup. A little bit, yeah. So I'm going to do this in, uh, in a different room where there's a thing. So 
Okay. We'll see. I'm with chemistry. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. So, while he's doing that, I will be um, getting started on. Putting in some base colors on this horse. I'm going with this sort of sandy brown. Is that the brush? Yeah, that's the brush in question. And sometimes that's the importance of drinking coffee in the morning. Yeah, that's just too right off. Good. I use that brush a lot. So I'm what kind I, of cleaning the little metal part there too. I know that oh, has yeah. a name. Is it a finial? No, no, the metal part that holds the bristles. And because that's flammable and smells really strong, I'm going to keep it in the room where I poured it. All right. Okay. I think it's good. Yeah, it looks a lot better. So, just a little lacquer thinner, and uh. Maybe I'll clean. This brush could use a little clean. Too. It's very clean. Since we have it out, you know, I clean this one. Mm hmm. That one always absorbs like a million gallons of paint. Yeah, these are my most used brushes. Since we have them, might as well use them. <laughs> yeah, I didn't really like coffee either, but I eventually... I, I kind of taught myself to like it. Which is funny, because when I didn't drink coffee, I worked at a coffee shop. Doing a little brush cleaning today. Mm. Oh, this is terrible. Oh yeah, that one it's that one really absorbs and it refuses to let go of me. No matter what I do. Yeah, that's mm, coming out, but boy. It uh -huh. definitely needed this. It uh, turned out uh, dark. Mm-hmm. Yeah, even isopropyl alcohol I'll clean it with won't get that out. No. So that's the color I'm going down with my horse. It's this sort of light brown. But I'll probably put a little umber on it later to tone it down. It's a pretty old brush, yeah. Mm, it's starting to see the color of the original bristles. Let me clean these. This has a little painting thread, or printing thread. There we go. Let's pull that off. This one needs to uh, epoxy back on here. Yeah, that's one of those ones that should probably be thrown away. But I haven't. Well, it's a nice, 
a nice long fluffy brush. Sort of. About half of the there's about a third of the bristles are actually cut short right now. So mm -hmm. it ends up having like a stiff little section with a lot of floppy section. Mm -hmm. Which makes it a little awkward to use sometimes. This horse is going to be a slow process. With the amount of detail there is on that. Yeah, I'm glad you keep taking on these detailed ones. Uh huh. You become much more skilled at that. Than I am. Okay, well, it's not perfect, but it's way better than it was. So yeah. I'm going to dump this. And then finish taking the tape off the realistic water. And seeing what happens. Let's see. Really okay. Uh huh, that's good. Given that I have that brush back, this, that'll do a little better job than this detail brush of uh, covering the horse. Do a little clean. All right. So there's one leg of horse. Oh, boy, there's a lot on this horse. The more I look at it. Mm hmm I remember looking at it and saying, I don't know about this. So, it's going to be a little sloppy right now, but I just need to get the main part of this horse covered. In order to move on to the next section, so... There'll be a little wash over on the gear that I will have covered when I paint the gear parts of it. Because there's a whole lot of equipment, stirrups, saddle, saddle cloth, all sorts of stuff. Mm, ice cream sounds pretty good. My favorite ice cream, mm. well I do like a classic chocolate, but I probably like chocolate chip cookie dough. It's currently my favorite. 
at our farmer's market. Ice cream genie. Not, not like a gin genie, but like a name genie. Gene makes uh, ice cream, which is, let's just say it puts Briar to shame when you compare the two next to each other. I think Briar's is a fairly local brand as well. You think so? I don't know, actually. Anyway, hers is really good, and she makes um, malted chocolate chip cookie dough with malt flavored ice cream. And she's had that recently. We just bought a pint of it. Mm, that's really good. That's pretty funny. So, yeah, just uh, there's a lot of little sections of horse fur, you know, fur. They're furred, right? Or is it hair, horse hair? Yes. Yeah, horse hair is like. The tail and the mane. The tail and the mane. Is it fur on the rest of the horse? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think so. Um, I'm not really sure now. There's a lot of little sections all over, like under underside and everything, that need to get covered before I can really start working on this horse. And this is a resin printed horse and it's not it's not perfect. I'm finding occasionally little threads and things that I just need to pull off. But that's okay. So this is uh, the realistic water it looked like a disaster when we first put it on. I think when we put it on last Friday. Last, last Tuesday. Tuesday, it's been a week. And on Friday after three days it uh, was still really sticky and was leaking all over the place. In and the tin we put it in. No, yeah, which was a good thing we did. Now, a week later, it's actually pretty hard, and it conforms to the surface, so you can see the ripples, and it's hard. You can touch it without leaving an indent, so it looks like the secret it's is time. to... Um, I don't know if it's visible, but there's actually like a layer, a clear layer, trying to get it so it focuses. Thigh is a little hard with this camera. There it goes. Yeah. There's like a clear layer where the realistic water is sitting. And it's actually, it is quite hard and not sticky at all. I think the um, idea is... Surprisingly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Surprisingly looks good. So I think the we'll main, put less of it on. You only need like a millimeter of liquid, mm -hmm. I think, rather than, what did we put on, like a centimeter? Yeah, <laughs> like three millimeters. Three millimeters. So just like a single millimeter. And we need to do a little better job sealing the edges. Mm -hmm. But I think... You know, that looks pretty good for a river tile. Very shiny. So, all right. Yeah. So 
Oh, we can do the other two sometime. And we can use the yeah, two items. And we can use up our big bottle of realistic water. Yeah. Eventually. Well, you with Make that a little gigantic lake. Uh, yeah. So, um, I'm going to continue the tedious and unrewarding process of painting the uh, bedposts, spirals on the bedposts with the uh, color I was using, which was dark sand, I guess, is what it was. That sounds right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I'll just keep that going, and then I'll really go back over it all with uh, the dark brown I was using, flat brown, and then um, come back and do the sand again, and then uh, do the flat brown again. And keep going back and forth on this line. On there, Forever. over and over again until it eventually looks like it's okay. Or the universe comes to a heat death. Or I just get sick of it and paint everything blue. And, or you go, you know, painting that really complicated horse doesn't look so bad. Yeah, that might be too. It might end up that the really complicated horse doesn't look so bad. Or it does. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, just a the bubble. So, post number two. done with the bottom part of the horse. So, it looks really weird right now. <laughs> As the, uh, just the fur on the bottom part is painted in. I'm thinking the main, the tail will be a slightly different color, like a darker brown. Uh, looking along the top here to see that's armor. There's the neck and the head, obviously. But there's a lot of cloth on this horse. So, I'm gonna just keep going with the color I have open and get the basics of this sort of neck and head covered in. And then there'll be a whole ton of detail work. Trying to get inside little corners that are going to be a lot harder to get into later. When I have to be more delicate. I'm doing some patch jobs, um, spots on the legs and everything, but I might have missed. Trying to see exactly how the barding on this horse sort of works itself out. Having it all primed in black makes it a little harder to see everything as well, which was a great choice on my part. So from the looks of it on the chest 
here. There's some fur in between the barding. Now for the little portions of the head that are visible under the armor pieces. So what color is this horse's armor? What do you think, then? Hmm. Silver? Like, like an iron armor? Or is it wearing something fancier, like a brass, bronze, or copper? Or like things with little gold highlights, or... No, that's a good question. Could very well be, um... I'm thinking, like, iron. Yeah, it has, like, a bedroll on it, which implies it's more of, like, a military horse, I guess. Mm-hmm. But with, know. you know, some bright embellishments on the high points, maybe? I could maybe do like that. Like, grass or copper? So I'm trying to piece them together. I'm thinking like uh, silver and blue with some copper. to be nice. That must have been rough for the three months. Wow. What are you looking forward to? Oh yeah, pasta is awesome. Alright, so I have a really rough fur put in on this horse, which help, should help delineate a lot of it. <sighs> yeah, pasta sounds really good, actually. So I'm gonna close that up and let this horse dry for a second. And then clean off the brush. And actually, I remember to clean just pasta. Yeah, my, uh, well, Lexi's, uh, brother was famous for eating nothing but pasta for years and years and years and years. Like, Buttered noodles are the only thing he would eat. Uh, 
pasta is delicious. Of course, once I clean the brush, I look and I see there's a small spot that I missed. I'll get to do it again. But that'll be a pain later if I don't get it now. So. Oh yeah. Well, I hope you enjoy some good pasta, now that you can, or when you can, soon. Or is it now? That'd be nice. How's your bed post going? Mm. What? Mm. There's a lot of stripes on these bed posts. Uh-huh. And they just keep going round and round. My hand's just not very steady today, I'm not sure if that's about it. Maybe mm. it's because Sophie was pulling on the inch. Hmm, obviously pretty bad today. She started out terrible. Um, but then after she, uh, food, as usual, she settled down. Oh, tomorrow. Well, I hope you enjoy your, your pasta feast tomorrow. This horse isn't the most perfectly balanced uh, model, but that's okay, it looks pretty nice. So I'm thinking of doing the, the cloth in this sort of medium blue. Which one is that? Medium. Medium. Just under field. Oh, one. Yeah. Kind of a nice uh, grayish blue color. I don't think we use that very much. No, I barely use this medium blue. But it's a very nice gray blue. I think it'll be good on a on a horse for like the saddle cloth and stuff. You know? Mm-hmm. But I don't want to handle the horse too much while, even if it's, uh, legs are only slightly damp. Because it'll, it'll flake off. Mm hmm And then your fingers will look like mine from the stripes. Yep. I only have one little spot on my finger right now. So... It was a quick little side project, maybe. We have a extremely basic shelf that will take almost no time at all to paint. Because it's going to be basically one color. I like monochrome. <laughs> so something sort of like this shelf, where it's just like set dressing. Um... What color wood should it be? Flat earth? Um, flat earth, yeah. With the wash should look good. This is the mostly empty one. I need to use it up. So I'm not going to use my biggest brush on this, just because I don't want to make a huge mess. But this brush will get a lot of good quick coverage. And I'm going to work on the inside sections first, because I can handle the rest of it now, which I won't be able to later. Really simple, straightforward, uh, well, 
shelf in order to kill some time while the horse is drying. And this does have a little bit of like wood texture in it, which is nice, so it's worth I'll give it a little bit of an umber wash later on. Just to give it a little tone. Nothing too heavy. So, how is the pillar? Almost done with the second one. Mm-hmm, almost. Uh, okay. That got a mess because the uh, metal part fell off. And I have a ton of paint. <laughs> oh, on the brush? The, the, I had it, yeah, I was yeah. dipping it, oh, and the metal off. fell oh, yeah. into the paint. Yeah, next time we get the epoxy out, we definitely need to uh, fix that. Yeah, so I might end up washing my hands after this, though. After I paint this, because I don't want to ruin, get fingerprints all over it. Quickly getting a little paint on the back. The back will generally not be seen, but you know, just in case it is, I like to have it be the same color. And it's printed like this. Uh, this was printed on its back. Sometimes the bottom part here gets a lot of ridges and it just absorbs paint. So that's okay, we're trying to sort of get through this bottle. Alright, well this was way sloppier than I wanted because of that break on the metal. But, you know what, we'll get through it. Let's see if I can get any of this paint back in the jar. 
And yeah, there we go. Let's see how that dries. Okay. Well, that was fun. Um, I'm just going to wash my hands and wash this brush in the sink. usable brush. Alright, dry off my hands a little here. I don't want very moist hands while I'm handling the painted part of that for so. Trying to get them nice and dry washing that, but it's better than getting extra paint on it that I don't want. Taking a quick look at this horse, see how it's coming along. Alright, so I think I think I'll put the cloth in next. And then a metal. And I want to be a little more careful with it, so I'll pull out this nicer brush for this section. <laughs> yeah, I know. Most some people don't like the word moist, do they? Ooh, we really haven't used this paint much. It's like, really mm -hmm. hard to... Factory tight. Yeah. Alright. You got it open. Okay, the big part of this will be trying to not get the blue uh, on the fur where I don't want it. So I'm going along the edges first here. Well, which means that if I screw up, I'll know right away that I screwed up. Yuck. Did you say? You said yuck. 
<laughs> What's wrong? No, this is just getting worse and worse as I go along. Oh. Mm -hmm. Fun. Hopefully the more I paint of this horse, the more it'll come. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The more I paint this horse, I hopefully the more uh, sort of sense the shape will make because it is Got a lot of little pieces to it. Including a um, little printing artifact there. That I just pulled right off. With resin printing especially, but any printing, you'll often have little struts that are like support structure struts that sometimes they don't all get removed on the first pass. Um, but they just keep everything from falling apart or going wonky when it uh, gets printed. Like that little piece I just found. There's a little bit more visible where the blue cloth is. It's a nice sort of gentle gray blue. Trying really hard not to mess up too much in the areas where there would be a lot of cleanup involved. side of the blue cloth coming along. Then I'll do the other side basically the same way and it looks like it's hard to tell if this is cloth or armor going over the horse's butt. It looks like there's a little cloth but there's also like some sort of like tarp. Hmm. Like a leather piece maybe. 
Yeah. Do you see that sort of shape? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's something underneath and then over. So maybe I can do the blue under. Mm-hmm. And then I'll do, do like a leather over. or something over. Mm-hmm. figure out what goes over it afterwards later on just be clear that's what that is uh -huh. Move a little bit of the uh, excess paint here. Sometimes it can bunch up on your brush and dry a little bit and create a little pile of paint that can cause problems. Some awkward quarters. Oh, it's kind of fun. like this bedroll on the back. Um, mostly won't be visible, but, you know, it'll be there. And if it ever does become visible, it'll be very noticeable. It's the sort of thing. I just could not hold that piece of skin. Did you remember to eat today? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. thing about paint is that you can just paint it over and As over needed. and over and over and over. Yeah. Kind of like I, I did with the labyrinth. Okay, well that's just, you know, that one is a disaster. So I'm going to paint these, uh, decorations on the side here. All right. 
before working on other spirals. Well, yeah, I'm gonna let it dry so that I can actually hold it. That's always important. Slightly better, but it'll do for now. There'll be a cleanup process later. Okay, well, there's a wrap of the blue. On the horse, there's like an extra layer in its gear. So, close this up and clean off the brush. Knock the horse over, always important. So, I'm thinking leather next, like all the leather pieces might be the next thing to do. Um, You're gonna make them leather colored? For the like straps. Mm -hmm. and everything. I could do them in a colored leather, I suppose, like a a black or a red. I guess it depends on how fancy you want it to be. Well, this is like a military horse, right? This is what we're going with. Yeah, so... Just so I was leaning towards just leather. And I think... We have leather brown. I was gonna squeeze by you and grab that leather brown. It should be that one right there. Yep, that one. Yeah, so we have this leather brown, which I'll probably end up using for the leather, unsurprisingly. And I find this leather brown actually comes on, it, it looks very orange until you put an umber wash on it, and then it looks very much like leather. So it's pretty good. So, well, I, I'm going to look at this. The bedroll, would that be like a cloth, probably? Mm-hmm. So I have all these straps and some stirrups. The leather going down to the stirrups, but then the stirrups are going to be a metal. I have this little leather piece on the back. The saddle itself uh, would be leather. So it's mostly straps, um, there's a lot around the head for the bridle, your brain is evil, um, and it looks like there might be a pouch or two, I'm not sure, but it's gonna be a lot of straps and bridle and saddle. Having fun. Oh yeah, three spirals. Sort mm -hmm. of. Oh, two and then one that's really bad. Two and then one that'll take a lot of work to fix. No, yeah, they'll all take a lot of work to fix. <laughs> it's just that the surface area is larger. Okay, getting a little out of this leather brown out. And then this is going to take a lot of detail work. So here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. The saddle clearly has like rivets along it, mm -hmm. along the edges, but it has this raised portion. Is that just folded over leather that's riveted in, or is that like a metal? Oh, this part? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's just leather. On okay. the saddle. Yeah. Just making sure. I, I was thinking, you know, metal would look cool, but it would be very uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. 
Hmm. All right. So. Maybe I'll start with the absolute worst part and do the underside of the horse here. Which I'm realizing I missed a small piece. But that's alright. So fairly complicated. Oh yeah, we are already at four. Time has been kind of flying. I I find something when I do these more uh, complex pieces as opposed to like a bookshelf. Uh, I get into a bit of a hyper focus state and completely lose track of time. Is hopefully entertaining, I don't know. But... We'll see. Um, yeah, so I'm getting very carefully along the ridged edges of this, uh, this uh, leather strap. That goes around the bottom of the horse. Because the less I mess up here, the less cleanup I have to do later. And there's a little spot next to it, which I missed earlier. And I'll have to clean up on the horse's tummy. But that's okay, because there's a little couple spots around the... <laughs> What's your favorite shape of pasta? Um... There's a couple spots I'll end up having to clean, because this leather is a little thin. So it's running a tiny amount. It's honestly going to be barely noticeable, except for... I noticed it. little leather straps that go around the stirrups. These stirrups which hang down under the horse are gonna be a real, real nightmare to paint later. I can tell just from having to maneuver around them right now that they're going to be a problem. Getting through mo some of the worst parts of this. With only mild to moderate cleanup on the list. 
I don't know exactly how I'm going to get one section of this painted. It's not an easy access piece. Which is the front side of the second strap here. But I'll give it a shot. I'm gonna have to like look through the legs while I come at it from under the legs with enough paint. Over. Yeah, that's gonna require some cleanup, but that's okay because I also have this front strap to do. Yeah, that ended up being a little messier than I wanted on this. Uh, underside of the leather. But, just keep going. I'll clean it up later. Now, if you've ever tried to paint under a horse, it's not easy. I wouldn't recommend painting under a real horse either. Mm -hmm. Um, avoid painting under a real horse. Really, any livestock in general are not the best to paint underneath. And now for this center, sort of part of the barding. It goes between the front legs, the four legs, which hopefully I won't mess up too much. On the sides, knowing there will probably be a little cleanup later. <sighs> That's very difficult. Area. Oh, yeah. Underneath, like that, <clears throat> where nobody's ever going to see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Except All right. you who are painting it. So, the next step will be the front barding and the head barding, which will be complicated in their own way. More less from the uh, positioning and more from the amount. So first we have these uh, stir up, not stir ups. What's the part that you the bride of the bridle that you hold? Is that just the bridle? The reins. The reins. We have the reins, which I'm sure to continually get paint on as I go over different areas and this sort of front piece which looks like it has some plates on it as like armor but it's a little hard to tell right now so my plan is actually to paint the whole thing in leather and then once it dries I can paint over the areas where I think there might be a little armor plate or something like that. Because it'll be a lot easier to tell when it's one single color instead of... Um, a bunch of different things. They might also just be leather knots with like a ring. Oh, I think that's what it is. Okay. I'm starting to see what... Uh, 
I'm I'm painting now, which is good. We have three leather straps coming into a central ring on the chest. Your brain's not working. I'm sorry. See, it's three leather straps that come into a into ring. Into a ring, yeah. I could not piece together what that no, was <laughs> when it was all black. But now that I do, I can figure out how to paint that. So that's a, that's a victory. So, that little chest piece there is a ring with three leather pieces coming together. There it is. This will look really hard to see. Alright. Now this reins and bridle will take quite a bit of work as well. I'm sort of saving the saddle for last because I've been putting my finger on the saddle a lot to hold the piece in place while I paint it. And when that's wet, I will not have the luxury of doing that anymore. So I've sort of been holding off. I can start to feel my focus slipping, which is problematic. And I already have a spot that I need to fix later from that happening. I got so excited about figuring out what the ring was. And I got, got sort of distracted. I'm not sure I can from over here. Is someone being bad over there? Oh jeez, that really is, uh, that's awful. Yeah, I'd be pretty angry too.
sort of messy. But I got what you're starting to at least see what you've got. I got the bridles for me and the reins and everything. And I'm able it'll let me hone in on stuff later down the road. Um and sort of get some more detail in later. I just mean getting the base code in is um, actually, even though it's the sloppiest part, it's actually the most annoying part for me, because I, I don't know, you're just getting, like, writing a first draft or something, you're just like, you need to get it out and on there, and then you can fix it, and you just see all the little problems as you go along. Yeah. I have to clean this car. Yep. Right. It's gonna be a little messy getting the underside of this, but it's getting messy on an area I haven't painted yet. That's just fine because I'll uh, be painting over that area anyway. All right, saddle is next. Now that I have the rough in of all the different bridle pieces. And this is a fairly large area to cover. But first I want to start with the edges. And sort of define my space and then work my way in. We are getting into the more middle sections here. 
I'm gonna use a me slightly, slightly larger brush for this saddle section. Otherwise, I will take an eternity. That sounds like our three prints just finished. Mm -hmm. So once I get the saddle on, I'll go change those over. here. Alright, I got a saddle. It's a little thicker here than I want it. I think because it's starting to dry a little on the top. Pull some out. There we go. So I think there's leather straps around this bedroll. And I'm not quite sure what this thing on the butt is. Is that like a fur, do you think? Here? Yeah. Mm, so blanket of some sort. Well, no, not the bedroll. No, but this there, one. yeah. Is it like a fur or like a colored piece of cloth? No, it would be like a colored piece of cloth. Okay. Well, I won't do that in blue. Not sure quite what color. Yeah. But while this saddle dries, put the horse down. Clean off the brush for once. I'm going to go change those pieces, and I think it's a little wet in the middle there. Paint consistency is both too thick and too thin at the same time. Oh. It comes up on the brush and then uh, runs on the model. Yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't be good to do. We've been printing these uh, wall sections. A little hard to see in the because they're black. But, uh, they're part of a large set we're printing where they will uh, be part of a, a dungeon set of keep. Something like that. So it'll look sort of like this when it's all glued together and painted. There's a whole lot of pieces, so that'll be probably a little bit of an episode or two of just gluing and painting. Yeah, we haven't really, other than some sewer tiles, we haven't really done much. Uh, yeah, well, we made a lot of our dungeon tiles before. 
actually started doing these live streams, so. And it ended up not seeing a lot of that being made. I think, I think it was like some of these sewer tiles are the only pieces that people saw. Mm hmm. I think those are. Oh, all right. Take a little look at the horse. The saddle's still wet. So it's gonna keep looking funky until I finish the black part. Um, and those are gonna be so mostly silver. I think. One little section here in the leather. Yeah. And then I'm also going to uh, put some leather on the, there's like little straps that go around this cloth bedroll blanket behind the saddle. And it looks like it has some metal clasps on it, but I'm putting in the leather first, and then I'll be putting in probably some brass fittings later. They're very ill-defined, so I will have to define them when I put the uh, cloth color in. So for now, they'll just be too little. Stop. Okay. So, it's 4.30, do I want to jump into doing, playing in metal? What do you think? Mm, yes. Yeah? Sure. We're... I'm going to use this chainmail silver because it's thicker than the uh, other metals we have, and since it's a black primer, I'm going to have to be fighting against that a little bit. So this will be a little more opaque than the others. <laughs> well, what I can say is that each stripe I did was slightly worse than the one before. But it gives it gives the impression of spirals at this point. Maybe that's all I can say is it's the impression of them. I think when you go back in with the dark brown. Yeah, it'll help. The dark brown paint has a better consistency. This this really is not it's not helping. I'll just put it that way. Consistency is very important in a paint for model making. So as I was discovering, it blobs up on the brush, so I have this big blob on the brush. And then when I touch it to the model, there's too much paint and so it runs. Mm -hmm. I'll be glad to not be using much of this anymore when I'm done with this trick. At least on something fine. I'll have to remember to use that paint for like sand. <laughs> or sandstone, some sort of uh, larger environmental mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, or just tiny spots that can be better. Like we use it on the banks of the river tile. Yeah, because sand 
Andy Banks. Yeah. That makes sense. to go along the edges of the metal armor portions here before I work in too far. Um, this is a very tight, delicate sort of area, and it can be a little complicated. There'll be like some odd brass fittings here and there too, which I have to consider as I paint. Silver coming in now. It helps a lot seeing it painted in though. Mm, yeah, then you can really more. you can really see as you cover up these black spots where it's just primer, you start to really get a better sense of what it is you're looking at. What you're looking at. Which helps. Can't, like I was saying, getting these base coats in always is like the most annoying part to me. So I just want it to be done. It doesn't have to be done well because I'll fix it later. So how I end up feeling. <laughs> like I guess I, I sort of get impatient with base coating sometimes. But it can pay off if you 
are willing to take your time with it. Okay. Well, this will take the better part of another show just to clean up bits of it. Got the neck armor face thin. That's what the side of the bed looks like in its very rough form. Not too bad. This oh. this rim around the backboard, this rim here needs to be that lighter color too. But I don't have any place to hold it, so it's going to have to wait. I'm going to have to wait until... Uh, I pull that paint back out again. So I'm just going to let this sit because I'm really tired of it. Um, you opted for it. You're going to work on the bedding? Yeah. That'll be a little easier because it's going to be um, all one color. Yeah, it's just going to be purple. Um, and then I need to put a second coat of ivory on the, uh, the pillows. Yeah, that ivory is fairly... Uh, Not covers. It doesn't, it doesn't cover, cover perfectly. Mm. It's a good color, but it's not. it has some flaws. I'm going to wash this cup out, get rid of the sand, and put purple in it. And I'm going to just keep painting a horse. Clear this brush off a little. I'll paint that ivory first rather than using a cup or a drop. I'm just going to put a drop on it and spread it around. Getting to where it needs to be stored, point down. Is this mostly empty? Yes. Oh, yeah, that ivory is pretty heavily used. We just bought a new one, so. Yeah, that's over there. Just enough of it to do what I need to do. Put this in the vise. As we found with the scarlet red, there's still a lot in here. But it needs to be but it needs to gravity down a gravity little. Down. The part that annoys me most about doing a base coat is when you do something like all the horse fur and then you're going in and doing some other color and you realize, well, I just missed that whole area, didn't I? On that first pass. But now it's super obvious. Yeah, because you couldn't see it before because 
it was, it was all, all black, black and you couldn't tell what you were looking at. Yeah. The gray is actually a better primer for that, but still has that same issue. Alright, this is a substantially messy first coat, but I got my uh, armor headpiece on. Now, are there other spots that are metal iron stirrups, I'm guessing? And maybe some of the rivets. But I want to do those later when I'm doing finish, closer to finishing, I think. So well, maybe I'll see. But what I can tell is I'm completely losing my focus altogether. So, before I make a mess that I'll have to go back and fix, I'm going to just back off now. Clean the brush. And I'm probably not going to use this brush anymore today, because what I think I'll do is just... I'll finish up by giving the really straightforward, easy shelf here a little bit of a wash. Um, since that won't really take much or any concentration, and I'm pretty much out of it for now. So I'll set my horse aside. Grab this um, completely empty number watch. <laughs> if there's anything left in it, one drop. Okay, this is officially dead. Okay, that can go in the official trash can. And I'll need to find another one. Do we have an open one? Do you know? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Yes, we do. Right here. Hmm. Alright. Got some umber wash. This will be nice and easy. Oh, well, that's not... Super dry inside here, yeah, I guess. Oh, that's odd. It's like some corners that aren't dry. Hmm. I think they just got a little too much paint in them because of that spill. And I'm gonna spread them out a little. Let them dry. But. Since I have this umber wash out, I'll do the uh, most of it. Anyway. Just putting a little coat here and there to enunciate some of the wood textures.
don't need a lot on the back, I just want to tone it down slightly. Using it up, getting some of the spots a little darker than others to give it a slightly worn look. Now that I can just sit back and try. Okay. Too. Yeah, I'm just gonna finish these brass. Some brass. Highlighting the things here. All right. Well, what I'm gonna do is clean up. But thank you for coming. Yep. Thank you for stopping in. And we will see you on Friday. Friday. Bye.